Today we're going to be making a beautiful romantic Laura Ashley dress from this vintage pattern using a gorgeous vintage rayon. The thing is if you've sewn with lightweight fabrics like this you know it can be a little bit tricky so I'm going to be sharing six tips along the way as I sew that'll help you with any project that you're going to make using a light, slinky, difficult to work with, shifty fabric. And as always, stay to the end because I'm gonna recap all the tips for you so you'll know exactly what to do whenever you need to sew with a lightweight fabric. All right, let's get started. So this is the design I'm making, which is a McCall's pattern, and it's a Laura Ashley design, so it was licensed from Laura Ashley, and I just think it has that perfect 90s vibe to it, but it's actually from a little bit later. It's actually from 2006, so it's not that old, but I think it really has that beautiful romantic 90s look to it. And as I was looking at this, I actually was thinking that it reminds me a lot of one of the first dresses I ever made in the 90s when I was learning to sew. It actually it ended up being a complete disaster because it was supposed to be a bias cut dress and I had no idea what I was doing at the time. So I cut it on the straight grain and I looked like an encased sausage in this dress. But anyway, that's not gonna happen here. And I'm really excited to make it and make it right. One other thing I wanna mention is that I'm gonna be doing version D here. I really like the bodice. I'll try and show that to you. So it's got this really pretty um, neckline with a drawstring that ties in the middle. I really like that. Um, but I'm going to be doing the version C skirt. So I'm going to be doing the shorter skirt. So I want to show you the fabric that I'm going to use for this dress, which is this beautiful rayon with this rosebud print all over it. I really love this fabric. The thing is, it's rather sheer because it's white and it's, it's pretty thin. So originally I was going to line the dress. I was going to line the skirt of the dress with this pink uh, rayon chalet that I bought, which is this nice peachy pink. I think it would look great. The thing is, the more I was looking at my inspiration images and kind of thinking about the whole vibe I was going for, I realized that a line dress wasn't really it. I think lining, while it looks lovely, I think it makes a dress look a little bit fancier, a little bit more formal. And I wanted that kind of summer dress vibe, something you would maybe throw over a bathing suit or something like that. So being sheer actually kind of adds to the vibe that I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the undergarments I would wear with this dress, which would be a pair of uh, flesh tone bike shorts. That's usually what I wear under a white dress. And then I'm gonna drape the fabric around and just see how sheer it is and how it would look. Okay, so I put on my trusty summer bike shorts and I draped the fabric around my waist and just pinned it in place. And you really can't see through it, even though it seemed really sheer when I was looking at the fabric in my hand. When I actually put it on, I realized that it'll be fine if it's not lined, which is good news for me because that's way less work. So that's a simple tip that has saved me a lot of heartache, which is just when you're not sure about a fabric and how a fabric is gonna look, it's a really good idea to just drape it on your body and you'll immediately get a good sense of how the final garment is gonna look. It's gonna give you so much information. And if it's a case like this, where you're not sure about something like sheerness, be sure to wear the undergarments that you plan to wear with your garment and right away, you'll know what's going on. Okay, so now I'm ready to cut this pattern out. One thing you might find when you're working with a light or a slippery fabric is that it can tend to slide off your cutting table. And when it does that, it's really easy for the fabric to get off grain. And so what I like to do is I like to pin along the selvages, pin the fabric to itself, just so it stays on grain while you're cutting. Another tip with slippery fabric that tends to kind of shift all over when you're cutting is not to let it hang off the table because that's really gonna pull your fabric down. So what we're gonna do is just fold it up at the end like this. You don't have to fold it in any particular way. Just get it off the floor and off the end of the table. And then we'll just cut on the flat part here and then just keep unrolling it as we cut. All right, I have the pattern all cut out now. The next thing I'm gonna do is come over here and look through the instructions and just do a quick read through of all the instructions so I know the general order of operations, what the steps I'm gonna follow are, if there's anything that I need to tweak, if there's anything I wanna change. So I always recommend just doing a quick read through of everything before you begin. 
The next thing I do after I read through the instructions is I take my pattern pieces and I separate them into the steps, into the order they're gonna be sewn. So I have all my bodice pieces over here, I have my skirt pieces over here, I have my sleeve pieces over here, and I have the tie pieces over there. So for me, having everything separated into piles like this really just helps to speed up the whole process of sewing because I don't have to dig for what I need. It's sort of like in cooking, if you've heard the term mise en place, you know, everything in its place before you actually start to cook. It just speeds up the whole process so much. Okay, so we have everything set out now in front of us. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the bodice pieces. So we're going to take the bodice pieces and sew the gathering that goes underneath the bust. The first step, as always, is to move Rusty. So before I start sewing, I'm going to replace the needle. So I've used this needle uh, once or twice already. I wanna replace it with a brand new sharp needle in the appropriate size. With a lightweight fabric like this, you're probably gonna go with a 65 or a 70. I'm gonna use a 70 for this fabric. Um, I always recommend using a sharp needle that's the right size, but especially when you're sewing with a lightweight fabric, it's very easy to poke big holes and that'll compromise your seams because it's sort of like, imagine a perforated piece of paper. If you have large holes, it's gonna be really easy for the fabric to tear along that line. So you always wanna use a small needle that matches your fabric. So I'm gonna replace that right now. I'd say that anytime you go to the fabric store, it's a good idea just to pick up some extra needles. You can always use extra needles and it's nice to have them on hand so you can just replace them either with every project or with every other project, depending on how big the project is. Okay, now we've done the gathering along the bottom of the bodice on both the back and the front. So let me see if I can show that to you. So we've got three rows of stitches going and then on the ends, we have these long thread tails that we're gonna pull to create the gathers. So the next step is to sew the side seams. All right, so the instructions have you sew the side seams on the bodice and on the skirt, and then you leave an opening in both of them for the zipper. We're gonna be doing things a little bit differently because I'm using an invisible zipper. And with an invisible zipper, you wanna leave the entire seam open and then you stitch it closed below and above after you put in the zipper. So that's one of the little tweaks that I'm making. It's a small tweak, but I'm glad that I read through the instructions and kind of had that in mind before I started because it's really easy to get caught out by things like that and accidentally just keep following the instructions and forget that you need to make those little tweaks. So I find it really helpful to read through before and just have those in mind as I go. Okay, now I'm gonna pin it here at the right side. So one of the things to keep in mind with this particular fabric is that the right side and the wrong side look very, very similar, but just slightly different. The, the wrong side is just slightly more faded looking, but it's very subtle. So I have to be really careful when I'm pinning things together to make sure that I'm doing it right sides together and not accidentally flipping a piece. So I'm just taking extra care every time I pin something together to make sure that that's the case. Another tip when you're sewing with lightweight fabric and especially when you're doing a skirt or any long vertical seam is to pay special attention to the notches because it's very easy for lightweight fabrics to shift and you end up with one piece that seems way longer than the other. And if you just pin at the notches, pin at the ends and then pin in between, it's gonna help you to line up those pieces and make sure that you avoid any shifting. Bath time.
Okay, now I've sewn and pressed the right side seam on both the skirt and on the bodice. So both of those are done, and then we still have the open side seam where the zipper is gonna go. So for the open side seam, I went ahead and finished that raw edge with some serging. I'm finishing all my edges with serging, so I finished the raw edge here with serging as well. And I get questions about serging a raw edge like this before you sew it because there's this danger that you'll cut off some of the seam allowance and then your garment's gonna end up being a little bit smaller than you intended. So if that's something you're concerned about, there are two solutions. Number one is you can disengage the blade on your serger so nothing gets cut off. And the second solution is to do what I did and just serge right along the edge so that the serging actually overlaps the raw edge a little bit, as you can see. So you can still see where the actual edge of the fabric is, and you just make sure that your seam allowance is matching up with that actual edge of the fabric, which you can still see. So that's the way I do it. Um, really easy, it shouldn't be a problem for you, and if you really do worry about it, you can always disengage your blade. Okay, next step, we're gonna sew the bodice to the skirt, and after that, I'm gonna show you a little trick for putting in zippers on a really slinky fabric like this. Just started hailing like crazy out here. Here I am sewing this lightweight summery dress. Look at this. Do you guys get excited about making warm weather clothes when it's like miserable outside, when it's hailing and raining and storming like this? Or do you feel kind of like you should be making winter stuff? Let me know in the comments. I personally, I don't know, I feel even more excited about warm weather to come when I'm making a summer dress on a miserable, miserable day like this. All right, this seems like a good time to check the fit. So I just pinned it over my clothes to kind of get an idea. I just wanted to make sure that it's not gonna be too tight across my belly specifically. And it's definitely not, it's a little bit loose, which I prefer. So I, all I did was I pinned it at the shoulders here and then I pinned it at the side seam here, just over my clothes, because then I could pin it to my actual clothing and kind of get a sense of how it's gonna look since the sleeves aren't sewn in yet. And obviously there's a lot of extra fabric here because it's not, we don't have the elastic in yet. But I'm getting a sense of the overall shape and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with it. I don't think I need to make any adjustments. So now I'm gonna make the sleeves and we actually have a virtual sewing hour at work right now. So I'm gonna dial into that to see my work friends while I make the sleeves. Okay, bye. See you later. All right, that was fun. I got my sleeves done while chatting with everybody. If you're looking for a community of people who sew and can support you and help you and answer questions and be there for you, you might wanna check out Seamwork if you're not a member already. You can get 50% off an unlimited membership as a YouTube subscriber at seamwork.com slash go slash YouTube 50. And we'll put a link to that in the description below so you can check it out. It's an amazing community and it's so fun to sew with other people. Okay, next we're gonna put in the zipper and I'm gonna show you my favorite trick for putting in zippers on lightweight fabrics. Okay, so if you've ever noticed when you've sewn something in a lightweight fabric with a zipper that the zipper sort of buckles, it gets sort of wavy when you're wearing it. 
That's because there's a big difference between the weight of the fabric and the weight of the zipper. So the zipper is much stiffer and heavier and the fabric is much lighter. So a way to prevent this is to take some narrow strips of interfacing and actually interface the seam allowance where the zipper is sewn. And that'll add some stability to that seam so it won't be as likely to buckle. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm just cutting a couple narrow strips of interfacing about the same length as my zipper. Now I'm gonna apply the strips of interfacing to the seam allowance below the circle, which is where the zipper is gonna go. So it's gonna be interfaced all along this seam on both sides. And then when we install the zipper, we'll have this nice stiff firm edge to apply it to. So I'm using a lightweight fusible knit interfacing here, which is a really nice interfacing to have on hand. It's very, very light. So it just adds just a little bit of stability to this seam without making it really, really stiff. You can see it's still kind of drapey. It still has the same sort of drape, but it's just got a little bit more firmness to it now. Okay, I'm gonna put the zipper in now and then sew the seam above and below the zipper and I will be right back. I just sewed the zipper in. So we've got the zipper in and we've got the seam sewn above and below it. So now we're ready to put the sleeves in. And if you wanna know how to install an invisible zipper, which is personally my favorite kind of zipper, I use them all the time in lots of different garments. If that's something that you want to learn more about, we have an awesome tutorial on our site. I'll link it down below. Definitely check that out. We have a plethora of tutorials on the Seamwork site. So if you are looking for something that is a specific technique like this, definitely go there and check it out, do a search. You will probably find it there. Okay, we're almost done now. All we have to do is the elastic casing along the neckline. So I'm gonna sew that in and then I'm gonna hem it and we will be done. All right, the sewing is done. The dress is hanging. It looks so pretty. I am so excited to wear this. I think the neckline is so pretty. I think the short little puff sleeves are just so adorable and classic. It's such a beautiful 90s romantic look. I'm really excited to try this on. So let's see how it looks. I absolutely love this dress and I think one of the best parts is I can tell that I'm gonna wear it a lot all summer long. It's just one of those dresses you can just throw on and go, which is basically what I live in in the summer. So very, very excited about this one and I cannot wait to wear it. Here are the six tips that I shared for the next time you want to work with a lightweight fabric like this. Tip number one is to drape the fabric around your body before you sew if you're concerned at all about sheerness. Tip number two, when you're cutting, pin the selvages together to prevent shifting. Tip number three, when you're cutting also, don't let the fabric hang off the edge of the table because this can also cause it to shift and pull it off grain. Tip number four is to choose the appropriate needle size and make sure that you're using a fresh needle, which is just gonna make sewing with lightweight fabrics a lot easier. Tip number five, when you're sewing long seams, like for example, a side seam on the skirt, make sure that you're paying special attention to the notches and lining up the notches as you pin so that the fabric doesn't shift and you don't end up with one side that gets stretched out much longer than the other. And tip number six, if you're worried about your zipper causing buckling, especially a side zipper like this dress has, you can interface 
the zipper opening with long strips of lightweight interfacing. I like to use knit interfacing for this, and that will give it a little bit of stability and prevent it from buckling and rippling at the side seam. If you like this video, be sure to check out all the other videos I'm creating about the projects that I'm sewing this spring. You'll probably enjoy those too and get lots and lots of good tips. You can also go to the Seamwork website where we have tons of free tutorials, like the one I mentioned for the invisible zipper. So if you wanna learn how to put an invisible zipper, definitely check that out. It's very comprehensive. All right, I will see you next time.